Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Developer Hangout for today, January 9th, 2019. It's 2019. It is. We're it's back like from the, the holidays. future. We're back from the holidays. Yeah. We, we, all, we all survived. We were off for like three weeks. Yeah. I hope well, everyone's holidays were great. I hope everyone's well rested and enjoyed their time off. If you got any, if you didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer at Privateer Press. That's us scoon over. Development Manager at Private Press, and joining us for the first time on Dev Hangout, the newest member of the Dev team, Jeff Olson. Hello. The Playtest Coordinator. Jeff, say hi to everybody. Hello. My name is Jeff Olson. I'm the Playtest Coordinator. Uh, I'll be handling a lot of our internal and external playtest stuff. A good example is our CRD. Um, so you'll be finding me active on the CID forums. You'll see me active in the community, uh, and basically handling a lot of those processes that we uh, do to make sure that the game is dope. Yep. As, and, as the hi Jeff chat scrolls across. Well, yeah. and, and you're also not, you're also the main coordinator for all the internal playtests yes. we do here at Privateer Press as well. So you got a lot on your plate. You're going to be really busy. Yep. Welcome. Glad to have you on board. Uh, so if you're not sure what you're watching here at Privateer Press, we like to stream. So we stream currently two times a week. We're going to be doing dev chats every Wednesday, always at 10 a.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. and get your paint on at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific every Thursday. Tomorrow's going to be a really special one. Ron Cruzy is going to be hosting the dev chat, and we're going to have uh, Doug Seacat. We'll get your paint on. We'll get your paint on. Dev chat. Sorry, get your paint on. No problem. My bad. Thank you. Yeah. This is why you're the I'm manager. Here. You I'm catch here. my mistakes. Here. You fix my failure. <laughs> Keep things on track. Uh, Ron Cruz will be hosting, and then uh, you know we'll, we'll talk more about what's going to be happening with that in the future. Uh, you may have noticed that Weekly Rumble wasn't mentioned. The format of Weekly Rumble is actually going to be changing, and we're going to have more details coming on it soon. It's going to be really, really awesome, and we have some really exciting things to talk about. So for the, for the foreseeable next couple of weeks, you're going to see uh, Wednesdays will be Dev Chat, Thursdays will get your paint on, more details on Weekly Rumble mm -hmm. coming very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the topic of today's Dev Chat, uh, we haven't talked about Minicrate in forever. And luckily, uh, we've got video producer Tony Konacek behind the wheel running the streams. So Tony, hit me with some sweet graphics for the money crate. Oh, he's so good at what he does. So first off is uh, the main mini crate line, mini-crate.com. It's a mini miniature subscription service where you can go sign up. You get a miniature every month. You can do mm -hmm. a single month or you can do six months at a time. If you do six months at a time, you get a sweet VIP model, yep. a seventh free model. Right now, Raggedy Mandy is the, the current mini crate model. It's an alternate Ragman. You can play in War Machine of Hordes. Uh, and you have until the, uh, the 19th uh, of this month to, to sign up. After that, the model's gonna change and mm -hmm. you're gonna see a completely new mini crate appear. Also, there's another mini crate line for those of you that are Legend of Five Rings uh, fans. Like, I'm, I'm super pumped because I'm actually currently active in a L5R role playing campaign and Several of the models that currently exist are literally basically the characters that my group is playing. Playing like it. The um, uh, lion model is like ex almost exactly my wife's character. So Nice. That's, so if you go to mini-crate.com slash L5R, you can sign up to get the L5R Legend of the Five Rings mini crate models. And the current one is as HEDA, available till February 5th. And after February 5th, if you haven't signed up to get one by then, it's going to switch over to, to the next one. So uh, how is the RPG going, by the way? We just finished the like intro adventure like module that's kind of a little on rails, like a cool mystery. And now that we've done that, uh, we'll be like my GM will be doing a whole, you know. The party hasn't thing. the party hasn't turned on themselves, killed each other, and then like the survivors run through the taverns and and, and murdered everyone. So like murder hobos. Well, I mean, basically because I'm playing like a scorpion character, which are like the weird assassiny ninja people, and I'm not really trying to play that character, but in the module. Like, they keep giving me poison. <laughs> Fair. They're like, good job on graduating. Here's a vial of poison. I'm like, but I don't want to poison anyone. That's okay. Here's another one. Cheers. My character is not going to make it through airport security. <laughs> yeah. And then they all get killed by a Naga archer. Yeah. So let, let's get to the topic for today's dev chat. Uh, by the way, this? if you're watching this on YouTube later, uh, we stream... You stream uh, twitch.tv slash privateer press, and you can also join us on Facebook. If you ever miss a stream, go to youtube.com slash privateer press prime and catch it afterwards. And if you are watching this on YouTube later, you're going to see, especially Oz, make reading chat face. Uh, that's because we've got the chats up yeah. right now. Yeah. We will be talking to chat as this goes along. We obviously won't get to every single question, but we will try and chat with you as much as we possibly can. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Welcome from Twitch and Facebook. Good to see you all. Good yeah, morning. Keep your questions short so I don't have to stare at the screen reading 150 words trying to figure out if I can talk about the question at all or if I have to skip it. 
I say you do what you want. Chat. Yeah. You you say what you want. So the new Grimkin CID just started today. Grimkin round two. Uh, mm -hmm. It's started today. It's lasting for two weeks. So it's going to end on January 23rd, which is on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a smaller one in terms of the model counts. First, people will notice there's no legacy models because honestly, Grimkin don't really need like they they just came out, in, especially when you look yeah. at CID cycles. Yeah. It's, um, it's, they were they were early in CID, and they were part of the pro. They were, they were the first factor. They were the to be first part of the process. Yeah. So we're pretty happy with where they are. That doesn't mean that we won't decide that, that something does need to be included. But right now, we're going to focus on these models and and probably not add anything the whole entire time. I'd be very surprised if anything did change. Yeah. Because Grim yeah. Grimkin had a great CID cycle. They've proven to be viable in, mm -hmm. in both casual and tournament formats. And they're just a well-constructed uh, faction. There's things that could be uh, played a little bit more. And I think some of the models yeah. that are being released in this cycle are going to see some of those models that were being a little underplayed brought up yep. into the light. So uh, why don't we get started, Oz? Uh, let's talk about the first model people uh, got to see, which is the Nayslayer Warhorse. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite model, probably in this entire thing. Yeah. Because it takes the concept of the Nayslayers are like little kids playing games, and it pushes it up even more because mm -hmm. they're on they're on hobby horses, which are a horse head on a stick, literally alive. Uh, previously, yeah, alive, I'm not sure it's alive. Horse before. head on a stick, running around playing games, and now they have a giant rocking horse. And the commander is yelling at them to play different games, like mm -hmm. tag and hide and seek and all those kind of things. Yeah. So this, this is an attachment for a small based cav unit that's a large base model. So that's already weird. Well, yeah, it's Grimkin. Yeah. It's also something with hit points in the unit. So everybody else is really tiny, and they're not like normal cavalry units where mm -hmm. they don't have hit points. But this thing has like eight, yes. so it's a big deal. And It's a big boy. And it, uh, it has a follow the leader ability, which changes up the bonuses that the rest of the unit get. So uh, it's, it's really functional. It's like a toolbox of what you might need in different circumstances. You've got Leapfrog, which gives things annoyance and parry. Which is huge. You've got Play with Fire, which gives things continuous fire and flame burst, so they can deal with infantry better. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Tag, which lets them have grievous wounds, so you can deal with tough things. Mm -hmm. Or healing on war beasts and stuff. And then um, it also gives them relentless charge. No, they're, they're, they're already baseline. Oh, I forgot. Yep. Yeah. That. Yeah. that was a change we made. Yep. That my brain didn't remember. Dev brain. Yeah. That happens. And, um, and it has its own arm piercing lance because it is just another nace layer, yeah. even though it's great big. And it's, it's, it's kind of uh, almost a vehicle. It's got three different gremlins on it with different, like one's holding the shield and yeah. one's got the lance and one's just screaming and pointing. It's definitely like the model I'm most interested. In yeah, and I, I super cool. I've seen I've I've seen renders and, and bits and pieces of it, but I haven't seen the whole thing put together and all. All should be knows that his lance, which is armor piercing like the regular nay slayers, hits harder. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it, it's a bigger because it's, it's a bigger, bigger lance. Yeah. So like the three different abilities he has, uh, annoyance and oh, parry for the first one for leapfrog is mm -hmm. amazing because one thing you could always do against nay slayers was lock them down because yeah. they 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 do the most damage obviously when they they charge and get in mm -hmm. there and now with the ability to sort of slip out of combat. That, that, that's going to be great for them. Grievous Wounds existing in Grimkin, they don't have access to, to a, a ton of it. Uh, tag is going to definitely be useful. You're going to see it come up. There's enough tough and enough healing in the game where I, mm -hmm. I, almost every game you play, Tag should have some effect. And then uh, the one that's going to blow up everybody with fire, uh, called Play With Fire, uh, that's yeah. when sometimes the Nayslayers find themselves in a situation where they're not hitting the heavy targets they want to put themselves into. Sometimes yeah. they have to just get into light infantry. Somebody's shielding, jamming with light infantry. And this just makes them even more efficient. So I think that like the Warhorse is an amazing like force multiplier in yeah. the different types of things the, the Nayslayers want to do, uh, the different modes as it was. The, the Warhorse just really like helps ramp up the effectiveness well, of each one. And Leapfrog having annoyance means it's not just get them out of a problem. Mm -hmm. It's also use them... Get them deeper into the actively problem. Actively yeah. and, and, and make it harder for your opponent to take them out or, or something else that they don't that they don't want to deal with the Nace Slayers. They want to focus on something else so you can get those annoyance models in there and, mm -hmm. and, and mess with them that way. Yeah, I like so, to think of Leapfrog as like you go in on a hard target like an enemy Warjack or, or war beast or whatever and you, you beat it up a whole bunch and then uh, you reposition out of that combat with the parry into, into another one yeah. into other things um, yeah. you, know, you send a couple of them in there to to apply the, the annoyance debuff yeah. and make life difficult for your opponent while the other ones kind of back out mm -hmm. so uh, Jeff as the, the the CID coordinator what kind of stuff are you looking for when people are testing these 
Uh, I mean, obviously, the really big thing is all of the follow the leader abilities. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that all those feel good. They're, they're all options. They're, it's not like you're going to have to use every single one, every, every single round, every single game. Yep. But mm -hmm. we want to go, you know, if you're, if you're playing against an opponent who has a sea of infantry models, did you feel like playing with fire was helpful? Did it make your opponent force themselves to space their models awkwardly so that they did not catch on fire? Yeah. Or in a situation where your opponent had to pack in because let's say you're screening with like the piggybacks and they had to get a bunch of dudes in there mm -hmm. and you come in with the lances and they caught everything on fire, did that feel good for you? Did it feel good to light a bunch of things on fire? Yeah. If your opponent's playing a bunch of tough models or a lot of healing, did the grievous wounds you know, do a thing? Did, you, did the parry help you unjam yourself after you got stuck in? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't need to be like every single game, you need to do yeah. every single ability, but did it feel like when you had a game with them, did you get to do a cool thing with them? And that's a common piece of feedback we see uh, mm -hmm. you know, on, on casters a lot, where a caster will have like a lot of spells, and, and one of the first things we'll often hear with someone is, they can't cast all their spells in a single turn. They don't have enough focus, and it's like, that, that's okay. Yeah. Like, it, you have all these options. You may not use one of them in, in an entirety of a game. You may not use one often. They're, they're just tools available to you. And if you can't do every yeah. single one of them all the time, that's great. That means you have viability. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to my favorite model. Real quick, I'm going to, there's a question that I see I think is very relevant. Is, is, sure. is the Grievous on impacts as well? Oh, yeah, all these things, I believe, modify their their weapons and so it should affect their impacts yeah. and stuff so yeah the weapons of the models which the mount is a weapon yep. so that that does apply i believe it also even applies if you play with fire and you you uh impact attack something uh, and then you'll boop. El, El Chanero on Twitch says that Circle's going to be salty if they keep Perry. Probably a reference to Blood Trackers uh, having lose, per, lost Perry. Trackers were very different than yeah. Slayers. They've got ranged Weapon Master and uh, can get around there. And you've got... It, it's apples and oranges. So yeah. I, I wouldn't make that direct comparison. Well, uh, and there's another comment in there. Kevin on Facebook says, it seems like acrobatics should be part of Leapfrog. And yeah, thematically, narratively, Leapfrog, jumping over people, acrobatics. But Slayers with Perry and acrobatics would be insane. Yeah, they'd just be going and, and way more powerful than deep we really into the enemy be. lines on models. Because we don't want them to ignore the screen that you've got in front of your hard target. We yeah. want them to say, I, I can play with fire to deal with that screen. Or I can there's enough gaps I can run through the screen, but my angles are off. But if they could just basically fly over everything and ignore free strikes, then the, that would they're be They're not armor piercing daughters of the flame. Yeah. That would be Yeah, we oh, we try to be oh, very gosh. careful with the combination of acrobatics and parry which we're going to talk about yeah. in a second on a different model. Well, let's go ahead and switch to the next model. Yeah. Tony, Tony first. bring him up. Mm. Oh. He's so the piggy, the he's piggyback so, officer. He's so juicy, literally. Like he's, he's got more, more. So when we're talking about you know thing, uh, new additions coming to the Grimkin, they're going to help bring some models that weren't seeing as much play up in the light. The piggyback officer, I think, is way up there. Uh, so first off, the mini feet. Defensive formation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Defensive formations. I mean, it, it, the unit gets repo five. Uh, and then ends in a shield wall. Great for a unit like this. Uh, they got Retaliatory Strike. A lot of people, I think, were expecting Vengeance, uh, but Retaliatory Strike, just super strong. Come in, hit them, swing back. Uh, they get to remain in the shield wall. You don't have to worry about any sort of you know, uh, positioning errors there. The big thing for me, though, is Tactics Bulldoze. Yes. And it's not granted. Yes. The granted yeah. is the Retaliatory. The Tactics is the Bulldoze. So when you add this big piggy boy, uh, uh, you are always going to have bulldoze. Bulldoze on this unit gives them a whole new purpose. Yeah. yeah. They are very hard to remove. And talk about just scenario pressure, being able to move people yep. where you want them, set them up in different angles. It's more movement shenanigans uh, for the Grimkin. Uh, but yeah, I, I just when you're playing Steamroller, having these guys walk into a zone and start shoving people out is going to yeah. be super duper strong. Well, and they were already really good defensively in those scenarios with... You know, they're hard to remove, so they can get into a zone and hold it. But now they can maybe bump you out of the zone yep. and then still hold it. Yes. So they, they did two things. They pushed you away, and then they, they hold on to it. Instead of just trying to, to just, you know, toe in and, and hold on and be an annoyance. And this is a piggyback that has all the normal piggyback defenses. Uh, you know, I saw a conversation on Facebook earlier. Why doesn't he have shield wall? Because shield wall's on the unit. Yes. Uh, and the person that was talking about that yeah. was asking about like, the incinerator officer. Remember, the incinerator officer gave shield wall to the unit. It wasn't yeah. on the unit before. Uh, so yeah. this piggyback officer can benefit from shield wall. It's got impervious flesh. He's got eight damage boxes. Yeah, he's a little bit rounder he's, than the other boys. Yeah, he's, 
He's a serious pig. This he's big piggy boy is chunky. like. Yeah. I saw a prototype model, and he is a he's a round boy, and I love him. Oh, he is chunky. Yeah. That pig is chunky right. as well. Well, but he's he's an older, more experienced version. His his mount has a large. <laughs> Looks really large sad. Like he's like. Ugh. Mustache. He's he's been doing this longer, and the pig is much more experienced as well. Uh, sure. <laughs> he's got all those medals. Sure. He's accomplished things in his life, great and glorious things. Uh, there's a couple questions about the new bulldoze rules. Yes, this is going to be the new version of bulldoze where you can only be affected by bulldoze uh, once per turn. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I believe those are reflected on the the, the PDF that's available online. Mm -hmm. If not, our bad will fix it. But I'm pretty sure it's the right one. And uh, like, and I think you can't really like, understate how really really potent bulldoze is going to be on these guys because like think about it along with um, the nace layers with the warhorse it allows you to open that little gap. That normally, if you tried to then run another model through to charge something, would mm -hmm. eat a free strike. But now with the, the parry option, mm -hmm. now you can open a little gap with the bulldoze, and then you can slam some nace layers through onto some critical target. Yeah, it's man. I'm really excited to see what people do with them, and and seeing piggyback show back on the field. And I think the piggyback officer, the 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 nace layer warhorse, and then when we talk about the the malady man in a bit and what he does, mm -hmm. bump got a major bump. Yes, like dark menagerie has easily been the most popular theme force for for Grimkin. Bump was the less played one. Uh, but a lot of what you're seeing in this CID cycle is all big, big tools for, for Bump. And I expect to see a lot of battle reports from mm -hmm. Bump and what people are, are able to do there. And like there are, another thing about the retaliatory is like how there's several Grimkin warlocks who have uh, damage buffs. You have the Scything Touch from King of Nothing, his aura, you have Fury on Heretic. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's like you put Fury on these guys and your opponent charges them and you retaliatory and like, Bump, pal 16. It's... Yeah, they're 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 brutal. Like they're yeah. they're they're yeah. gonna be sort of the Grimkin infantry is by design a little bit um, more fragile. Or... More fragile. Yeah, the word I was looking for. Uh, to, they're they're you know they're they're not as tough as like Kador troops in general. Yeah. But like the piggybacks are they kind are, of want to die to fuel other aspects of the army, like Arcana yeah. cards and yeah. things and like the, that, and the Death Nail and the Corpse Collection and things like that. But I think a piggyback unit with the officer with a Death Nail giving them the armor buff. You run two of these, run it with Heretic and Heretic and Wanderer, probably. I, see, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, reports with those two. Uh, that's going to be a, a tough piggy nut to crack. <laughs> Them chunky boys. So, uh, Draker8 has an interesting question. Yeah. Um, he's asking about should the death nail be assumed? Um, no, but keep it in mind. Yeah. So, we, we test a faction as a faction. But we're only looking for changes on the models that are part of the CID document. So don't say the death nail is not good enough with these guys to make the death nail better. But also consider if a death nail is a good inclusion or not with these guys and what the options are. Because there's not only one way to build an army correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you're giving feedback, tell us what you think about the entire package, but only suggest changes or whatever for the models that are in here, not a previous model. But also, don't always just consider every single Grimkin army that will ever include these piggybacks also as a death knell. So think about that and give us those kind of comments as well. I, I intend to play them both with and without the death knell, depending on, I think, a couple factors. I'm going to kind of dojo and do some, mm -hmm. some spicy dojo tech with them. Because I think at, in the shield wall, there'll be arm 17 with the impervious flesh. Mm -hmm. If you have the death knell aura out there, 19. I think there's valid reasons why either of those is a sufficient, you know, to, to mm -hmm. eat, eat an attack, right? Yep. Yeah. Let's move on to number three in the list, and one that I know you're ex exceptionally yes. hyped for, Jeff. I am. He's got a monkey. Yep, the Malady Man. Or uh, Milady Man. Yeah, or the Milady Man. <laughs> it's not you choose. It's not pronounced Milady Man. You don't tell me how to pronounce words. I'll say however I want to. I know you don't know how to pronounce words, but this one I'm telling you. If you I'm don't think I'm going to tip a fedora and say Milady Man every I'm time I play with this thing, you're out of your mind. I'm keeping you on track. It's not pronounced Milady Man. Milady okay, uh, yeah. Go on. The Malady Man, I'm really excited for, uh, after, especially after seeing his concept art. Uh, this guy is going to be a really sweet model. Mm -hmm. uh, I, real quick, I want to address something that I've seen pop up too. So he is a unit. There's two little little dudes in there, uh, and bump the bump in the night theme force just allows Grimkin units. So he yeah. is yeah, so because we he's in. We've added him to the composition of Dark Menagerie, mm -hmm. um, and so people said, oh well, he's only in Dark Menagerie. Then nope. it, it, he's nope. uh, he's natively in, in bump. bump. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the Malady Man is is a little Grimkin unit of two models. It's going to be an organ grinder. It's going to be this little gnomish dude with his little organ grinder and his little monkey man. 
Uh, and it's just a little monkey. It's not a monkey man. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's just a little monkey. I just want to say monkey man. Yeah, you're right. He's just a monkey. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll notice that that that. The base sizes are different. Everything. Yes, it's, it's a it's a little bit. Yeah, the Mali man is a large unit. base. He's going to have a big old wagon, and uh, then the monkey is a small base. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the Mali man is sort of like this kind of supporty, controlly, castery guy. Uh, he has combat caster, which I think is really important because he has no actual weapons or anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. he's if you do a press forward, he's only running. But combat caster allows him to use one of his magic abilities before he runs. Yep. And those are mm -hmm. Cradle Song, Death or Pace, and Something Wicked, which I'll kind of go over each. Uh, Cradle Song is basically, he projects an aura around him uh, that when enemy models, enemy living models, in their activation within five inches, they become stationary. Mm -hmm. So this is like a really powerful control aspect, especially when you pair with the idea of like a screen of piggybacks in front of him, and then he runs up behind and projects this aura so that when your opponent runs up to bop the piggybacks, they go, Ugh, and they fall yeah. asleep. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. And he's on a large base. Yeah, so, so it's like a, a big, chunky aura around him. And we should talk about that ability real fast. Yeah. One of the things I'll be paying attention to testing the most, he's FA2 on a large base with a 5-inch bubble that puts everyone to sleep at the yeah. end of activation. I don't hit. Yes. Uh, so you have a chance to get in there, but that is a a huge amount of the table yeah. you can cover with this go-to-sleep aura. Because there are two. If they're yeah, FA2, they're so you could yeah. have two. So yeah. you could have this big, like, overlapping monstrosity of stationary aura. Yeah, and we're going to be keeping a close eye on if people are able to... We've tested it a lot, and we want to see the kind of list people come up with and the games they get in to make sure it's not becoming too degenerate, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then he has Desperate Pace for Grimkin units. So it's Grimkin, and then the text on Grim is Grimkin unit. That's This is huge. This is a monster change that's really impactful, especially for Bump in the Night, because it, it allows the various units in the army to get that extra little bump in speed. Uh, the dread rots threat like eleven now when they charge. The nace layers uh, go thirteen yep. off the top of my head. Well, it makes that bulldoze better too. Because yes, it, those piggybacks can get more. In yeah, the it, where it, they need to be. now the piggybacks can like on the first turn they can run up, and then the next turn they can get desperate pace, run up, maybe charge something, or use their defensive formation to re-enter shield wall. It's going to give them a lot more mobility on the table, mm -hmm. which is just something that's going to be a massive boost for the and, that theme force. And just in case. He can desperate pace himself. Yes, so I was about to bring that up. Is remember he can desperate pace himself. So they can they can declare a press forward. Mm -hmm. He can desperate pace himself, and then that monkey is going downtown. Yeah, because sometimes you got to send Whoa. the monkey. That's, the That's not the sound of a monkey. Monkeys Whoa. make that sound. This monkey does. We see. Look at. Wait, hold on. What? One more time. His arms are up. Okay. Is it like this? Well, not like not like. This. Fine. Wow. Well, look at the picture. That's wow. how the monkey, that's what the monkey's doing. But we've gotten to the day where I'm the serious one. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, All right. you're never welcome. You're never and then lastly, the he has something wicked. And something wicked basically turns the monkey into a infantry murder machine. Yeah. Uh, this is just to punish your opponent if they stack up their light infantry a little too much. Uh, maybe he gets to go downtown on some war beast or war jack because it gives him an additional die on hit, an additional die on damage, and killing, killing spree. spree. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he even though he's only got you know the half inch of uh, range on his melee weapon, uh, he can still you know eat a couple models, Pac Man his way through a couple dudes. So and and the, the best named ability on it's the hard to is... keep a good monkey down. So uh -huh. if your opponent kills the monkey, you got to bring back a new monkey every turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the monkey itself has acrobatics, counter charge, yep. and, and, and monkey bite. One of the best rules we've ever made. Uh, and it was earlier somebody yeah. was mentioning he has acrobatics, but out without parry. parry. Is that intentional? Yes, we're going to see how it tests out because Perry mm -hmm. actually felt a little bit too strong when you went with something wicked. Countercharge acrobatics is is actually pretty useful. You yep. know, if you're keeping the Malady Man as a support unit behind piggybacks and things yep. like you, you were mentioning, mm -hmm. the acrobatics is more through moving through your own models up through mm -hmm. them past those lines of piggybacks and other things to get into the action. It's because you can have the Malady Man behind a line of piggybacks and the monkey just punching people in the head as hard as it can until they die. Uh, and then if that monkey dies, the Malady Man don't care. He just vomps another monkey into existence. Yeah. So, yeah, the monkey intentionally does not have yeah. parry well, the, and acrobatics. And the monkey is defense 15. Yeah. And normally you would get the, you know, the plus two to hit against a free strike, but he has the monkey bite. So he's effectively, def 15. always def 15. Yep. So yeah. If they're living, war jacks don't care. <laughs> sure. A war jack punches monkeys better. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, so the monkey's got the monkey bite. He's got counter charge, so he's really good to, like, yeah, stick behind some piggybacks. Because with acrobatics, you can actually go through, and you don't even you know, you can just ignore the intervening models, so you can just mm -hmm. zip right through them and mm -hmm. go to town. So the the Malady Man, the Warhorse, the Piggyback Officer, these are all huge 
increases for, for bump of the night yeah. again. And, and, mm -hmm. and so uh, we know a lot of people, again, we're talking about changes to bump as a theme for us in the different units. We want to see a ton of testing on these new offerings that are coming out because we think that they're going to make far more uh, quality of life increases for that theme force than they are Dark Menagerie. And yeah. then I'd like to point out that the Malady Man has also been added to the army composition of Dark Menagerie. Yep. Uh, that's just so we can have another little unit in there. It gives them an option to have some different things going on. It allows them to score certain scenarios a little bit more conveniently. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You can kill the monkey if you want to and fuel your death nail corpses, I guess. If you're, if you're in the mood that's for That's pretty it. dark, but, yeah. uh, you know, whatever. Well, yeah. we, we had a question um, that we want. I want to highlight for testing. Somebody asked about uh, removing the monkey yes. from play. Uh, right now, it returns the monkey, Correct. so if the monkey is RFP'd, it can't be returned. Um, the other kind of text those abilities would have would be add, add a monkey. Yeah. So, so that is something to test and look at. Is this guy not good enough if you can RFP the monkey yes. and then he doesn't have a monkey anymore? Yeah, the highlight something I definitely wanted to bring up was if you feel that with the prevalence of, of RFP, and if you know, you're, if you have a, a lot of opponents that are RFP and models, you feel that when he loses the monkey, does this guy feel like he does very little? Yeah. Which I find very hard to believe because he, he does a lot. Yeah. There's a couple of questions: of, Can you make a void spirit out of the monkey? Uh, I mean, yeah, you can rack the monkey mm -hmm. if you're that kind you of can person. Turn it into a tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. turn it into a tree. Turn it into a, a pirate. pirate. Yeah, Shanghai a monkey, make yeah. it into a little monkey pirate. You do whatever you want. I, I mean, I am desperate just to get a jillion of this model and do things with it. Fair. You could play. You could play uh, Barrel of Monkeys with it almost because it probably has enough <laughs> bins. You could just hang a bunch of monkeys. Uh, and Sunday Taco on Twitch chat says acrobatics ignores intervening models for line of sight for charges. That is accurate. So counter charge yes. and acrobatics is very mm -hmm. very good together. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I was talking about keeping him behind lines and then not having parry. Using the acrobatic as more of a, a defensive tool than an offense. Oh man, tool. could you put like all the little like Kador hats on the monkey? You can do whatever you oh, want. Oh my gosh, possibly. that would be incredible. Oh, possibly. Oh, Tony. Uh oh. What's uh -oh. happening? Oh. Oh, Hungerford's mic is being Hungerford's mic. God, this is so nice. Hey, look, Tony's on camera. Yeah, I'm so happy you're barely. here. Barely. Just it's barely. It's like your mom. Can you, like, you think your mom come and, like, yeah. scrub off some can you, of the Can chin? you lick yeah. your thumb and, like, <laughs> get some dirt off his face? Thank, thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Do the best. Let's move on to Baron Tongue Lick, the Lord of Warts. Yep. Another one that you're very excited yeah, I'm about. Yeah, super so. pumped for the and Baron. And people have seen this model painted. Yeah, Jordan has finished. We did the, some previews of it. Mm, so he's he's all panned up and ready to go. I think they're gonna do some photography and stuff mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. I think he's solicited. Yep. Uh, Baron Tongue Lick, Lord of the Warts, is a sweet uh, caster attachment mm -hmm. for uh, Grimkin. So he is going to be sort of like an arcane support solo who also has a bunch of other really cool options. And what we realize is. The Grimkin, the Defiers, are so different. they're so different. They're all doing yeah. something really, really different, really, really unique. And so it was really difficult to just give them, like, someone who's like Silas or, you know, whatever, just like yeah. a generic. We, yeah. wanted to, we wanted to give them someone with a lot of character, a lot of really cool abilities, and a lot of options on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so first off, uh, he's, a, he's a big frog man, and so he's amphibious. <laughs> he's a real big frog. Yeah. yeah. He's not a man. croak. Yes, so people were asking not. if he was a croak. No, this, no. Is, this is a this he's is a, a frog. He's a demon from he's hell. A, yeah, he's a weird toad frog. He's a gr he's a grimkin. What's yeah. the difference between a toad and a frog again? Is, I don't know. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, so he's got arcane support, so he can upkeep a spell for free every turn. And I should point out that every single defier has an upkeep they want to probably upkeep. So yep. like this is just universally useful mm -hmm. across the faction. Uh, he can jump. Obviously, because he's, he's, a, a he's a big frog man. Yeah. Uh, which is going to give him a lot of mobility. So he's speed five, he can jump another five. He's going to mm -hmm. be going places, doing things. Uh, then he has three magic abilities. He's got Parlay. Parlay is on Madeline Corbeau. That is super strong. Uh, Somebody with this much mobility. This is, yeah. One of the things we need to test yeah. the most yeah. is Parlay on this model that can be super mobile. Yeah. So is he. He could be hanging out behind your defier, making sure you don't get a melee assassination on you. Uh, or he could be playing really forward and just in the middle of your opponent's army going, I, yeah, I, if, did he have a Cajun accent? He's probably got a Cajun accent. No, he's not blind water. He doesn't have a Cajun he's, he's, he's a Grimkin. He's, no, he's from pretty, Urkane. He's, pretty he's, from like, he's from like the nightmare realm of Urkane. He's from hell, effectively. So, so what like, do they sound like down there? Definitely not Cajun. Okay. That, I... Anything I say, someone will take offense to, so I'm not going to speak about his accent. <laughs> uh, so Parlay is very powerful ability. It stops models from attacking either him or his attached caster. I like this on a model that's mobile, because if your opponent mm -hmm. has some sort of range threat for your caster, you can put this guy over 
across the table. Yeah. And it doesn't say that your caster has to be in this thing's command range or whatever. It just says models near him can't attack your yes. caster or him. So it's he's got Madeline is not the most mobile thing in the No, she kind of world. stands around like her fantasy yeah. cigarette or whatever she has. Yeah, she's going <laughs> to she's she's much more about protecting your caster from melee threats because she's near your caster. This guy is like, what what might hurt my caster? I can probably get over yeah. there and yeah. shut it down. Uh, he's got spell slave. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so spell every again every defier has a spell at the very least that he can uh, cast with spell slave. Some yeah. are definitely much stronger than others. Like abuse with the child is going to be huge. Yeah. Like child's mm -hmm. going to really adore this guy. You throw out random hex blasts with the heretic. Uh, boundless charges with uh, uh, old witch. Yeah. Like there's, there's there's some great options here. And, and like you said, some are going to be stronger than others. Yeah. Um, and then swamp gas. Yeah. Swamp gas yeah. is um, definitely a thing he does. In <laughs> I, 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 I mean, he, he's definitely plurping down. Uh, uh, gas comes out of his body. Yeah, it makes some. it makes living models nauseous, so yeah. they they hit worse. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's also a move five, jump five, five. four inch AOE cloud effect around he can put. him. Yep, and with a. Uh, People that are able to keep, create a cloud wall, like King of Nothing, it's, oh, another, yeah. it's another great yeah. tool. But also just being able to uh, put Veil of someone's got Veil of Mist. Doesn't the Wander have Veil of Mist? That's another. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, this is another. I mean, four inch clouds are nothing to sneeze at, right? Like, maybe you have two forests <laughs> yeah. that are close enough to. Oh, to I know what you're going to go there for. <laughs> yeah. So I think Swamp Gas is probably the one that might come up the least amount. You'll usually be parlaying your spell slaving, I mean, but when maybe, it does come up, it's going to be super useful. Yeah, he's have. Yeah, I wonder does have element. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple four inch clouds there, and it also kind of like helps keep him alive a little bit because it gives him yep. concealment while he's in the cloud, so he's a little bit hard to shoot. Uh, if people want to come over and bop him with a melee attack, you know they might be in the aura in the cloud and have the minus two their attack rolls. Um, just lots of flexibility yep. in terms of like what the package this guy brings. Um, he's gonna, he should have something cool he gets to do every game. Some some mm -hmm. of the defiers he's going to be doing certain things. Some of the defiers, he's going to be doing other things. And for some of the defiers, he's going to be doing something wacky and crazy every single turn. Which leads to his weapon. So let's yeah. say that he didn't have any of these cool abilities. Yeah. He also has pull and consume yep. on his range three tongue. It's so a melee weapon, too. It's a melee yep. weapon. It's so a range yep. three melee yep. weapon. Yep. Yep. That's, that's how it goes. Yeah. So he's mad. He's mad five. It's it's fine, but like. Well, when you it, factor in like glimmer imp or uh, or the paralyzed from the clockatrice spray, things like that, it gets a little bit easier, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so somebody was asking me earlier, why does he have consume and pull? Well, remember he can pull medium bases. He can only consume small bases, yes. and you can't consume casters, but you can pull casters. Yes. So like sometimes, yes, what you're going to pull in, you're going to eat like a toad, right? But yeah. sometimes you're just going to hit that, like, I don't know, shield-walled uh, man of war and yank them out of, out of uh, formation. Yep. So yeah, I think what we're looking for is, because I think he's going to play very, like I mentioned, he's going to play very differently with every single defier. Yep. Uh, and so we're, we're looking for those situations where uh, in testing is like, it's okay if you're playing the child and you use him as just an abuse bot. And he's just going around just spell slaving and abuse every turn and upkeeping her discord spell mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, tantrum. Uh, that that's cool. That's fine. Did, did did you feel like you got your value out of that? Um, and in some cases, like say King of Nothing, he might be hopping around, adding to the cloud wall, and then spell slaving a death to dust and mm -hmm. upkeeping the scything touch spell. All these kind of things. It's okay for mm -hmm. him to be a little bit more static with some casters, a little bit more active with others. We just want to make sure that when you're playing him with those casters, did you feel like he did a really like useful thing on his card. Yeah. Is he worth the points? Mm -hmm. Did you have fun with him? And did he do anything that was like, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on parlay to make sure that yes, it's not... Yes, parlay like, is yeah. definitely the thing where it's like... Really mobile parlay could possibly be a problem. Yep. So uh, let's move on to the grave right, ghoul. Right before that, though. Travis, I know the difference between a frog and a toad. I told him never mind because <laughs> I didn't want to get into it. But thanks for putting it in the chat. It's nice. And uh, I'm not going to repeat the other thing you put in the chat later because that's just disturbing. Travis. Yeah. Now, uh, your name's all in green, and I, I can't actually, like, my, my... Lord. I feel like my brain melting wow. trying to read it. Wow. But the question that was... Uh, the Toward, Towards the ether. Towards, towards the ether. Towards the ether. I'm sorry. Your name is just, like, lime green, and it's, like, yeah. burning through my, my skull. 
Uh, I, I can see it now. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It thank, depends thank on you, where Tony. The, it depends on where on the screen it is too. Like the lower, it's hard to see. So the question was: the cockatrice is not in the CID, but for purposes of testing interactions, should we presume the last iteration of the cockatrice, or has it changed since then? We will be putting the cockatrice rules up later. We're actually going to try and get them up today. It's not in the CID in terms of changing. We've already finished the cycle, but we do want people to have the last version of the rules because there are some interactions, especially with the Malady Man. We want to see people testing with uh, the Clockatrice. So we'll we'll make sure everybody has the most up-to-date mm -hmm. versions of that uh, very, very soon. Okay. And, and also real quick, I'm seeing a lot of people talking about things like shooting off uh, Tongue Lick. Even with the decently high defense, he can still be simple to remove, but like you're playing Grimkin and Krabbits are a thing. They're everywhere. Yeah. And so, also, um, a lot of those arcana rely on one of your own models getting killed. Yeah. So, Sometimes maybe you just need him to dive in there, yeah. lay down a cloud, and force your opponent to, to waste resources to remove him. Yeah. And then you get to go, he triggered my trick card. I mean, Crate 98 asked if the hat for uh, Tongue Lick is a separate piece. I honestly I don't know. I don't seen think him. so. I saw some masters that Jordan was working on, and I'm pretty sure he's the a full like resin body, and then I think like his. His uh, cane arm is a little is a metal ad, ad bit. I, yeah. I double check. I'm pretty sure though. We're but, we're we're not experts on that. Yeah, but with a so. saw, anything's possible. Yeah. So, uh, Oz, Grave Ghoul yeah. time, sir. Grave Ghoul, tell us all about it. Um, the Grave Ghoul's really interesting support model. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's a a really skinny, creepy grave digger. Like an Undertaker, dude. Yeah. Uh, carrying bodies in a weird a weird voodoo shovel, kind of. I mean, he's not. He's not voodoo because he's not yeah. blind water. Can y'all stop making comparisons to blind water? This is not hey, blind water. Hey, it's 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 a Hello. weird creepy shovel. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the most interesting things this model does is it digs in other models. Non warlock. Yeah. So he there can, was a while, by the way. There was a little while where he dug in warlock. You know what the dreamer doesn't need? <laughs> Just dig in yeah. on a yeah, stick. She she already has access to yeah. the artificial deviation. We didn't want her to be able to artifice her whole battle group. And then also mm -hmm. just be casually dug in somewhere in some opposite corner mm -hmm. of the battlefield. Yeah. Um, also, or the, like or the wanderer in on the wanderer seems oh. spectacularly but, awful. But what this like, model, what this model does, that's the most interesting and the thing we need to test the most is knowledge of the damned. Yep. Yes. When a model in this model's command range of makes nine. an attack or damage roll, yeah, and it's a nine-inch bubble off a medium base, so it's it's a pretty big chunk of a table, and it's FA two. Uh, you can spend a corpse on this model. To cause a reroll. Yeah. Now this doesn't say friendly or enemy. So when a model in this model's command range makes an attack or damage roll. Yeah. So Scavarus has this ability it's, from Crix. Uh, yeah. yeah. But corpses are going to come often. Yeah. With uh, in, in Grimkin, like mm -hmm. you're not going to have trouble getting corpse tokens uh, because especially when a living or undead model is destroyed within five inches of him, he's got body snatcher. Uh, yeah. That means like when your own models get killed. By your yes. own models, yeah. you get corpses. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's a that's a important thing to understand and for us to test is like, is this a little egregious? Are you just killing your own models to fuel this? Yeah. Um, and and you can have up to five corpses, so you can have five re rolls. Mm -hmm. You can't re roll a re roll. No, that's a pretty common rule in War Machine. Yeah. But this this is something that we have tested the strongest probably in, internally, and it's the thing that I'm most concerned about is just basically handing out re rolls, which is why. This guy's in one thing for us. Yeah, he's only he is very intentionally only in bump. I yep. think we think we really want him as a really strong like imagery support piece. It allows you to do a lot of things like, mm -hmm. you know, you need to get that critical hit with a charging dread rod so you can munch a model with your weapon master pitchfork. Yeah. And Sunday uh, Sunday Taco's got the right of it. The Twilight Sisters bring the, the people you kill on your own right back. So we're, yes. the, the chat was having a moment where they were talking about. Uh, the value of killing your own people just to fuel this guy, it's Grimkin. You, you have ways to get them back. And and mm -hmm. he can dig in your beasts right now, too. Yeah. He, the only thing he can't dig in is your warlocks. Yeah. So is that a problem? You know, it, yeah, granted, it's it's Bump in the Night. It's the infantry theme. You don't get the free corpses as part of the theme benefit like you do in Dark Menagerie. Um, yep. So it takes a little bit more effort to fuel something like a Cage Rager or a Skin and Moans. But even still is like... a a death 17 against shooting skin and moans because he's dug in a problem, yep. in, mm -hmm. even in bump. The main thing I'm interested in seeing is a wanderer lists that use uh, this guy to force your opponent to reroll under star crossed <laughs> against dug in models <laughs> while the malady man is making everyone stationary. Mm -hmm. That is like a series of force multipliers that I am interested 
in seeing how people play and how they're able to counterplay it. They, if they feel it's just way too egregious and there's no yeah. nothing they can do. Uh, so th that is the particular combination yep. of models. Yeah. You also have um, minus two to attack rolls with Swamp Gas. So there's there's a lot of... And Monkey Bite. There's, and Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of ways that the, the, that reroll can be an, a, on top of everything else. And, and yeah, just someone... Just one more... One more poke yep. right in the eyeball. And, and, and someone also mentioned, yes, you can dig in the death nail. It does nothing for it except allow you to see through it. You can see through it. <laughs> so, Which, hey. Maybe, maybe that matters one day. Go in the game. nuts. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, before we wrap up today's dev chat, we're going to take a second to see if any other questions come through real fast. While I'm doing that, I want to remind everybody uh, tomorrow, join us at 10 a.m. Pacific for Get Your Paint On with Ron Cruzy. Mm -hmm. Ron's going to be in. Uh, he'll have Doug Seacat and Josh Cologne joining him. So there will be a lot of really fun conversations there. Don't know what they're painting yet, so a little bit of a surprise there. Uh, another reminder that Weekly Rumble's format is changing. You won't see it next week. We've got more details coming on that very, very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to talk about one thing. It's popped up a couple of times during this entire chat. Yep. Um, people have asked the release schedule for these models. We don't talk about future schedules until they are solicited or officially announced because they can change. Okay. So generally, uh, CIDs start slash end around the time models get solicited, and solicitation is when they announce, and that's usually three months. So they'll be soliciting soon, but if you haven't seen a solicitation telling you their dates yet, then that's because it's not finalized and, and we're not going to talk about it. Um, it's the same thing as, you know, what's the next three CIDs, what order are they going to come in, because CID is controlled, like we always say, by the production schedule, and the production schedule sometimes shifts. Sometimes you get a Supreme Guardian when you weren't expecting one, because. So Jeff, question for you on the chat. Uh, what are you expecting to see from King and Nothing? In yes, I actually saw that, and it was going to be by Legionnaires. Yep. Uh, and so I'm a big King of Nothing advocate. Uh, you've probably noticed me in the last like two years, whenever King of Nothing gets mentioned in the Grimkin Facebook group, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like the Jeff signal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I should. I wonder if I can set it up so like it just automatically pings me on. That'd be horrible, actually. Sure. Uh, if you have not seen my King of Nothing list, you you, you probably will. In fact, I'll probably go post uh, an updated list. I'm probably going to be. Well, I'm not probably. I'm going to be uh, adding Baron Tongue Lick, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be removing the unit of Dreadrots and adding two Malady Man Men units. Sure. Uh, is what I'm going to be starting with, and adding um, hopefully probably the UAs, the uh, the Warhorse to my Nace Slayer units. But I think his question was, what interactions are you you hoping to see with King of Nothing in this CID and these new models? I am going to, as far as like, so I'm going to be definitely using Baron Tunglick to give me the upkeep, precise touch. I'm definitely going to be using Baron Tunglick to extend my Cloud Wall, which I'm a big proponent of with King of Nothing. Um, I think that the Warhorse, because I think King of Nothing and uh, Nace Layers are really good because he has the Scything Touch spell. So I think the Warhorse is going to go a long way there to really ramp up that unit. Uh, I think a dug in King of Nothing with the Grave Ghoul, like, because he's he is a little tiny man on a branch and he has got some bad defensive stats, like, yeah. but, you know, by design. Uh, I but think that'll. But you can't dig him in. in your oh. King of oh my God. We changed it. We changed it for that yes. very reason. Yeah. Yeah. What, what have I done? You got Dev Brain. Yeah. You remember the previous version. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, by the way, the King of Nothing, you know, is Fury 8. Uh, he can teleport around the battlefield by, you know, jumping into his own models. Uh, however, re-rolls, you know, off of his spells, like going for a spell assassination, like teleporting across the battlefield and trying to death to dust your opponent to death. Mm -hmm. uh, getting the re-rolls is going to be, like, very useful to help, you know, work on that dice math for sure. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good things for King of Nothing. In fact, I'll probably actually fiddle with King of Nothing and Dark Menagerie, which is something I did long ago before converting them into bump. So um, I'm looking forward to fiddling around King of Nothing for sure. Cool, cool. All right, so it looks like we hit most of the, the major questions we want to get. So we're going to be getting out of here. Uh, as a reminder, join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific for Get Your Panel with Ron Cruzy. And one last uh, reminder, because uh, one of these is really time sensitive. The, the mini crate for Raggedy Mandy ends on uh, January 19th. Yeah. Uh, so ten that days. Was 10 days, 10 days. So if you go to mini-crate.com and you want the Raggedy Mandy, you can sign up. You can still sign up for the six month sub and you'll get the VIP model, the Alexia Handmaiden of Death. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you are like Jeff and enjoying your Legend of the Five Rings models or you just think cool things are cool, you have till February 5th to pick up uh, Hida. Uh, that one's still available at mini-crate.com uh, slash L5R. Yep. And in fact, actually, I saw a concept of the Hida model months ago or whenever you know it happened. Um, and one of my players in, in the game plan is playing a crap character, and I'm like, 
dude, you're going to have to change your character because I saw this. <laughs> 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 and he, he didn't, but I was like, this yeah. is going to be so sick, and it's, I, I want to see you put on the table. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, everybody, we're going to go to lunch. What are you doing for lunch? No, nothing for at least probably an hour. Jimmy Jones. I'll, uh, I'll go to Jimmy Jans. Let's do it. CID.privateerpress.com. <laughs> Join in on the battle reports. Look at these rules for yourself. If you see anything you want to talk about, hit us up in theory and list building, and we'll see you all next week. And this dev chat's not sponsored by any particular restaurants. <laughs> no, my stomach is sponsored by Jimmy John's, just because the, the sandwiches are delicious. All right, guys. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Have Get a, a good club afternoon. Have fun with the bottles. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks. I'm really hungry, though. Uh -huh. Sandwiches. Mm -hmm. I've got that energy drink in me, and I've got an empty stomach, and I need to go get something. To yeah, go yeah. With it, so. yeah, let's go do it. Let's yeah. go do it. Somebody has Star Trek questions. That's, I don't know. Hey, hit me up. No. Not yeah. now, but no. like some other.